Hello. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I'm Christoph, and I'm Sales Director Africa for Parallel Wireless. And today, I'd like to talk with you about the benefits and the challenges of providing telecommunications access in rural areas in Africa. So, before I launch in, a few words, if I may, about Parallel Wireless for those of you that do not know who we are. Our vision at Parallel Wireless is to reimagine the wireless networks so all people can be connected whenever, wherever, and however they choose. It's our mission to deliver innovative products that unlock the value and disrupt the economics of wireless networks through intelligence and openness. Our customer success is our success. And today, we are working with a number of global tier one operators where our solution is being deployed very widely and rapidly. In this presentation, as I've stated, I'd like to speak with you about some of the challenges and the impact of bringing rural telephony, telephony services into rural areas in Africa. The rural communities in Africa are strongly faced with many challenges, including the lack of telephony infrastructure, which has further exacerbated the digital divide. The problem is that the majority still lack access and connectivity to mobile telephony services, in spite of the benefits that we've seen that it can bring in areas where those services have been brought. Africa is a continent that has been challenging to cover, and the provision of rural telephony services has suffered many setbacks, as we all know, due to several challenges, such as a high cost of deployment um, of network infrastructure, as well as a lack of a steady and reliable power supply, to name a few. Improved rural connectivity has always been a goal for policymakers, regulators, MNOs, and also parallel wireless. We've seen that where services have been brought into those areas in Africa, into rural areas, it has unlocked a number of different and far-reaching opportunities. The rise of e-commerce, e-business, e-health, e-learning, and mobile phone banking has further increased the need to bring services and to bridge the digital divide in Africa. There are various organizations that are currently working in rural areas in Africa that are using SMS to disseminate information to the population and to workers in those areas and regions. And they're doing so in a much more extensive and effective manner. We're seeing, for example, how teachers are being provided with vital information on mobile phones, as well as farmers being given information about weather conditions. And in some cases, community leaders being given information about disasters that are impending, such as adverse or severe weather, and what they can do to mitigate and to protect themselves for some of these conditions. Wireless technologies, as we have seen globally and in more advanced and developed economies, can provide effective and internet connectivity to dispersed communities located in challenging terrains. Communication is widely seen as an essential part and a very, very key social economic enabler. And access to mobile telephony services is an important element in enabling development. It strengthens communications, which promotes social networks, it helps community development and also helps to promote health, safety, employment, and recreation, to name but a few. Another very interesting development is the rise of e-health. As we know, e-health is a use of telecommunication and computer technology to transmit and provide medical information and services. These include improving access to healthcare services, especially for those in hard to reach areas, improvement in safety and quality of healthcare and the services and the products has been seen to also help to increase knowledge and promote access to healthcare facilities and services in those areas that are currently facing severe challenges. However, as we know, e-health in Africa is constrained. It's constrained by challenges such as the lack of awareness and knowledge about digital services and poor infrastructure, which sadly still begets a lot of areas in Africa. 
And also, we've seen, sadly, unstable and poor power supply has also led to poor internet connectivity, and this needs to be adequately addressed if Africa is really to take full advantage of the benefits of e-health. The use of mobile technology has been found to increase patient access to health, especially health services and information, and improve the way that health professionals also deliver health services. E-health can be used in treating patients, conducting research, tracking diseases, and monitoring public health. There's a great potential for e-health to improve overall well-being in regions. And some countries have already begun to promote programs centered around this. I'm reminded, for example, how in Ghana, for instance, nurses and midwives use mobile phones to discuss complex cases with their colleagues and supervisors and also to get advice about how to treat some ailments in particularly difficult areas. E-health solutions that use internet and related technologies to deliver and enhance health services are emerging as novel approaches in Sub-Saharan Africa. Using digital technology in this way can support cost effectiveness of care delivery and extend the reach of services into more extreme and remote locations. Africa has a goal of universal health coverage. Innovative strategies such as e-health are needed to ensure attainment of the ambitious universal health strategies and coverage that Africa governments are trying to achieve. E-health has the potential to expand good and affordable health care and health services in the last mile. And this is a major prerequisite for universal health care services in Africa. Now, let's turn our attention to e-learning. E-learning, as we all know, and this is something that really excites me, is something that has the potential to play a vital role in the delivery of quality education across the continent and can be an effective means to improve access to education in Africa. The relevance of e-learning for Africa lies in the fact that the majority, sadly, still are without proper infrastructure in order to be able to get adequate access. Therefore, Africa really needs to address this and provide adequate infrastructure to be able to reap the benefits and full rewards of e-learning. Having said that, e-learning is an emerging concept. As the development and adoption rate of mobile technologies in Africa increases rapidly. Distance education already plays a crucial role in providing access to education for millions of people in Africa. Wireless and mobile technologies can make it possible to provide learning opportunities to learners that are either without infrastructure for access or are continually on the move. The vital role that e-learning plays in Africa can really not be underestimated. It is flourishing and has the potential to make learning even much more widely available and accessible in rural Africa. In certain areas and in certain cases, children are having their curriculum delivered through digital devices. Now, if we also look at e-commerce and e-banking in Africa, it is still very much in its infancy, certainly compared to developed countries. However, it is growing and contributing to the overall social and economic development in the region, boosted in large part by the proliferation of mobile devices and the rapid rise in internet penetration. The increase in mobile subscription and improved network infrastructure is also playing a vital and important role. In the past few years, Africa has had the most rapid internet growth rate in the world. The means of internet connection in Africa is mobile. The rapid growth in internet connectivity has led to consumers connecting and also uh, producers seeing the advantages of e-commerce. Besides introducing new ways of transacting, e-commerce promises economic growth for many countries in Africa. E-commerce, for example, has been seen to facilitate trade, generate revenue, promote social and, and cultural development, and it's also helped in cross-border trade among certain African 
uh, traders. It has also stimulated entrepreneurship, and this has created particular opportunities for women in rural parts of Africa who are now able to apply their skills and be able to contribute to overall household income. Another significant area of progress is in the financial inclusion driven by a new generation of financial services accessed through mobile phones and the internet. It has been seen in Africa that digital financial services is a highly effective and viable strategy for institutions to expand into rural and, and hard to reach um, areas. Mobile money transfers has completely revolutionized the banking sector and increased financial inclusion in Sub-Saharan Africa. Most of the economic activity in rural Africa is largely agricultural. It is made up of smallholder farming communities. In agricultural development, the positive impact of mobile services becomes evident through the generation of a new and increased revenues for producers, farmers, who are now able to communicate better with suppliers, with buyers, and are also able to interact much more effectively with other stakeholders as they look to improve their revenues and their business sector. Smallholder farmers, however, as we know, also face daunting political, economic, social, and cultural institutional barriers. They have limited access to information and even the most basic of inputs like fertilizers and seeds. Digitization could transform the game for agriculture in Africa. It can create employment for the youth in the agricultural sector, and it can certainly promote economic activity and enhance food security. As we have seen, with the advent of digitization information and advice being delivered to farmers via text messages, in some cases via smartphone applications, this is helping to increase innovation and knowledge in sharing these, um, in sharing these facilities in some of these hard to reach areas. Farmers can now get a much more better produce because of farming and weather apps that are able to deliver vital information to them on digital devices. There have been tremendous strides made in ensuring that smallholder farmers become involved in the digital agriculture. Digitization is transforming African farming and we are likely to see an increase in services specifically targeting farmers in Africa. So, in conclusion, as we have seen, there are a number of opportunities that have been opened up through the provision and delivery of rural telephony services. We have seen that a significant incentive for improving connectivity in rural communities is economic and social growth that it can also promote. And this results in information technology being enhanced and being extended, education and health services being delivered far more effectively, and certainly providing opportunities for other key stakeholders within those communities, be it with youth, women, and farmers. Thank you very much.